In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the mifflin saint jor equations in order to estimate the uh, caloric intake need in order to maintain body mass. If you eat less than this, you lose body mass. If you eat more than this, you gain body mass. All right, so let's quickly look at those equations um, together now. Um, there is one for men, there's another one for women, so make sure that you're always using the correct one. Um, the uh, Each one starts with our sort of so here's the men's on top and women's on bottom. Each one's going to start with our um, uh, our weight factor here. So it's all 10 times the body mass of the individual. Then the height factor, which is 6.25 times the, the height of the individual. And then it's going to subtract out. So if you basically the older you are, the lower the caloric intake typically is. So it's going to subtract out the um, the age factor, which is five times the age of the person. And then we have our, our y-intercept values that these equations have at the end. Um, for men, it's a plus 5. For women, it's a minus 161. Um, so that is the only difference between the, the men's and women's mifflin saint jor equations. Um, just a quick note that um, depending on where you see these equations, uh, what textbook, what are online, um, the value, um, specifically this value here, might be rounded off. Um, I'm using the full value from the original paper that came out on this um, these equations, and I'm not rounding any of the um, values within the equations. I also am not going to round any of the values as I'm going through the calculations. I'm going to keep every uh, decimal place that my calculator will give me, um, and we'll round at the end just to sort of make sure I don't have any rounding errors. All right, so let's get to um, an example uh, person here. So we have um, Pete, who is 183 pounds. He's six foot one inches tall, 36 years old, and he reports being very active um, to you um, based on you asking him about his physical activity level. Um, so he estimates that, uh, well, he wants you to estimate his caloric need in order to maintain his body mass, and you are going to use the mifflin saint jor equation to do this. There are other equations out there. Um, I've already done a video on the Harris-Benedict equations, which is a, another very common set of equations for doing this. Um, so I'll put a link in the description below for that video. Um, also compare the values in this um, video to those values um, so you can get an idea of what the difference is going to be. All right, so uh, again, here's that mifflin saint jor equation for men. I'm going to do uh, um, an example of a man first. We have Again, we have Pete here, but I'm going to also, in this video, do an example of a woman so you can see um, the slight differences in the calculations, which isn't much. Um, so again, he is 183 pounds. We need to convert the uh, into the metric system, which is kilograms. So 183 divided by 2.2 gives us 83.18 kilograms. Uh, we also need to convert his height of six foot one into centimeters. So six feet times 12 inches per foot plus the one inch gives us 73 inches tall. 73 inches times 2.54 as the conversion factor to centimeters gives us 185.42 centimeters tall. Um, then uh, we're going to actually start doing some of the math here. All right. Um, I just copied and pasted the formula here, same exact formula I've already shown you. And then this second one is me plugging in his values, so his weights, his heights, and his age there. Um, so let's start off by doing the multiplication first. Um, I did each one of those, and we end up with these values left. Now let's do all the addition um, next. So the the 80, 80, 31.8, the 1158.blah, blah, blah, and then also the 5. We're going to add all those together first. That gives us 100, well, 1,995 um, with some decimal places. And let's do this subtraction of the 180 that was from his age now. And we end up getting 1,815.675, which we would just round most likely to 1,816 kcals per day. This is for resting energy expenditure, not total energy expenditure. So this doesn't take into account physical activity level yet. Um, we do need to account for that before we can determine how many calories he would need to eat in order to maintain his body mass. Because if you just ate 1,816 kcals per day, that again, not accounting for activity level, even if you're sedentary, you need to account for it. Um, that would, you would end up losing weight um, 
fairly substantial amount of weight, most likely over time. Um, just to give you a, a reference here, this was the value from the Mifflin St. Jour. Here's the value I got um, calculating from the same exact person using the Harris Benedict equation. What we now need to do though, is we need to look at the total energy expenditure, which is really what's important. So total energy expenditure equals the resting energy expenditure times an activity factor. All right, so let's look at some of the various activity factors here um, now. Um, so um, we have sedentary, light activity, moderate activity, very active and exceedingly active. And we have our activity factors here at the end. So sedentary basically means you don't do anything um, physically active unless it's you know just you know walking from one side of your bedroom to the other, to the other, you know, getting up to go to the bathroom, getting up to go, get something to eat out of the, the refrigerator. That's being sedentary. The activity factor there is 1.2. Light activity means you do a little bit more, maybe you walk around the block um, with your dog or do something else that's pretty minimal activity um, each day. But now we have 1.375 for the, the activity factor for light activity. Moderate activity is 1.55. And this is if you, you know, probably if you do moderate physical activity or moderate uh, exercise, um, on a regular basis. So, you know, go out and walk briskly for 30 minutes a day, um, something like that. Then we have the very active category. This is more like if you do vigorous intensity exercise every day. So, you know, 30, 45 minute run, something like that each day. Then the activity factor is 1.725. And then exceedingly active would be like an athlete, somebody who exercises uh, multiple hours a day at a vigorous intensity or somebody who has a very uh, intense job, um, some, you know, working in so, some sort of mine or uh, in, in, on a construction site where they're constantly carrying very heavy things all day long, that kind of person. And the activity for activity factor for somebody who's exceedingly active is 1.9. Um, these activity factors are very common if you look online, if you look in various textbook sources. Um, so you're gonna see most likely these numbers are something very similar to these numbers. The names may change a little bit here or there. The description of what fits under each category is probably gonna change a little bit here or there. Um, but these again are, are pretty common activity factors to use. There are other ones I'm sure out there. Um, uh, just a quick question to you. Um, I actually cannot find the original source uh, citation for these activity factors. I've tried looking for a, a little while. I maybe haven't done an exhaustive search, but I have looked a little bit. So if you know where these activity factors come from, please uh, put a comment below and let me know where that is. So give me the citation. I, I would love to have it. Um, so I'd appreciate that if you, if you do have that. All right. So but again, these are, these are normal activity factors. This is what everybody pretty much uses who does these sorts of uh, calculations. So coming back, here is the, was the uh, activity factor for very active, again, the 1.725, because um, he was very active. Here is that total energy expenditure equation again. So resting energy expenditure times the, the activity factor, Pull, plugging all this in, so taking this this resting or basal metabolic rates and plugging it in down here, just keeping all the decimal places for now, plugging in the activity factor, multiply those two together, you get 3,132, uh, and then a bunch of decimals after that. Rounding that off, it's just 3,132 kcals per day in order to maintain body mass while being very active um, for our example person here, so Pete's. Um, comparing uh, the Harris Benedict equation um, to the Mifflin St. Jory equation. Harris Benedict equation was 3,269 kilocalories per day. Again, the Mifflin St. Jory equation was 3,132 kilocalories per day. So let's do one more quick example here using a, a woman as our uh, example individual and showing the slight, very slight difference in the equations. All right, so just quickly looking at these equations again, really the only difference was what the y-intercept was. So for men, it was plus five. For women, it was minus 161. Um, but we're going to be using this equation here, the women's equation, in order to work through an example um, right now. So we have here uh, Tina, who is 135 pounds. She weighs, oh, she is five foot, three inches tall. Um, she is also 24 years old and she reports being uh, lightly active. So we're going to estimate her um, 
uh, energy needs in kilocalories per day in order to maintain body mass using the mifflin saint Jory equation. All right, so here is that mifflin saint Jory equation for women, uh, just copy and pasted from the, the table over there. Um, we need to get everything into the metric system for the weight in the height. So again, she was 135 pounds, divide that by 2.2 to get 61.36 kilograms of body mass. Uh, she was five foot three inches tall, so five feet times 12 inches per foot, plus the three inches gives us 63 inches. Uh, 63 inches times 2.54 gives us 160.02 centimeters. So now let's get into actually working this equation. Um, same equation, just copy and pasted one more time here. Now this one is me actually plugging in the values. So plugging in the weights, plugging in the heights, and plugging in the age right there. Um, first, we'll do each set of multiplication, and when we do that, we end up getting these values right here. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll do the addition first. So just adding these two together, we get 1,613 with some decimal places. Um, and then we will subtract from that the two subtractions. Um, so the 120, which came from the age, and then the, the y-intercept that was 161. So once we subtract these uh, values out from, from this value, we get 1,332.725 kilocalories per day, which we'll just add to, we'll just round off to 1,333. And so just to compare this to another equation, so um, again, the, the Harris-Benedict equation, uh, using the same person, I get 1,426 kilocalories per day using the Harris-Benedict equation, and I get 1,333 kilocalories per day for the resting energy expenditure using the mifflin saint Jory equation. So there is a bit of a difference there, again, a bit of a likely a slightly over-exaggeration from the Harris-Benedict equation, um, which is a much older equation. It's actually from 1919, so it's more than 100 years old. So there's a, a number of reasons why people uh, don't, some people don't particularly love that equation, but it is still commonly used today. All right, so on to calculating the total energy expenditure um, using the resting energy expenditure here, and then the activity factor. Uh, remember, she reported being lightly, act, lightly active, um, which going to our, uh, our energy expenditure uh, activity factor uh, table here. Again, we have sedentary, light, moderate, very, and exceedingly active, and we have our activity factors here at the end. For light activity, 1.375, is the value, which is what we have over here um, on our, our equations um, right there. So plugging those values into this equation, which is just the same as up here, copy and pasted, um, we get the 1,332.725 kilocalories per day, which was the resting energy expenditure, keeping all the decimal places, multiply that by the activity factor of the 1.375 gives us 1,832.49 and a bunch of decimal places for kcals per day needed in order to maintain body mass. Let's round that off um, to a nice even number uh, or nice round number, 1,832 kcals per day um, when having a light level of activity. Again, comparing this to the Harris-Benedict equation, which gives us 1,960 kcals per day, the 1,832 kcals per day using the mifflin saint Jory equation is a little bit less than that. Some of the pros to using this equation over the Harris-Benedict equation is it's a newer equation, so it, uh, the culture of the individuals who were in the study is going to be a little uh, closer to the culture of people today. Still not a brand new equation. Um, it's from the 90s, the 1990s. Um, but much newer than the Harris-Benedict equation from 1919. Um, so culturally, the participants are a little closer to, to us today. But regardless, I'll, I'll go ahead and put the uh, link in the description below to the Harris-Benedict equation video. I'll also put a link in the, the description below to a video where I talked about how to sort of um, calculate calories in and calories out through exercise and diet and how to sort of balance goal setting um, using these um, types of calculations.